Hey, hey, welcome to Mama Mandala, where magic is somatic. We're gonna turn and activate our greatest, most profoundly physical <laughs> magic wand, our spine. We're gonna do some spinal extensions, also known as backbends, and use them as a way to extend our capacity to connect, because what does the spine do other than connect? And in its the stability that it gives us. It is called our backbone. It also cultivates in a healthy way, great flexibility, a great ability to move in many different directions and in many different ways. It twists, it moves front and back, it connects the top to the bottom, it connects the front to the back, it connects the sides. So it has this great capacity to connect. So we're gonna extend our capacity to connect to that which we want to connect to more deeply in our lives and to that which is asking our of our attention and of our um, weight and of our presence so here we go i'm hagar by the way let's do this come to all fours to your hands and your knees and we're going to move our spines in a few cat and cows with an inhalation take your chest forward and your hips back and with a slow exhalation, as you ground your hands into the earth, round your back. Bring your attention to your breath and connect to it. Let it guide you. Inhale, the hips go back and the chest goes forward. And exhale, look in toward your navel and round your back. Start to connect more deeply to your breath as you bring a tone to the back of the throat. Inhale, look forward, chest forward, hips back. So the breath makes this resonant sound and exhale look toward your navel and round your back make the breath sound a little bit like a whisper inhale send your chest forward and reach your right leg back oh my goodness i know and exhale slowly lower your right knee to the earth and round your back so a deep tone in the back of the throat to slow your breath down and hear your breath singing inhale let your chest go forward and your um, hips go back as your left leg lifts up and exhale, bring your knee down and round your back, ground your hands deeply into the earth. Let's do that one more time on each side. Inhale, take your chest forward and your hips back and your right leg back and exhale, look in towards your navel and bring your right knee to the earth. And inhale, your hands root down as you send your left leg back and send your chest forward. And exhale, look in toward your navel and round your back. Inhale, bring your spine to the space between to where there is an arch and a round at the same time. And exhale, keep that as you take your hips up and back and reach into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. And if putting a lot of weight on your hands like this in down dog is not a good thing for you, you can stay on your knees, on your hands and your knees, or you can always put your hands on a wall so that you get the benefits of down dog, but without the weight on your hands and on your wrists, okay? So connect to yourself in the way of care. Inhale your right leg up, chest goes forward a little bit, but also draw your belly back and exhale, step your right foot outside of your right hand bring your left knee to the floor and pull your chest forward extend your spine and as you extend your spine as you go toward what we call in yoga often a back bend also go energetically toward a bit of a forward bend so as you're doing more of the of the cow version of cat and cow keep a little cat in it so draw your belly back draw the sides of the ribs towards each other so there's an engagement in the abdominal region as you elongate the front of your body and bend a little bit more in the back exhale stretch back into downward facing dog round your hands reach your hips up high root your heels to the earth inhale the left leg up chest goes forward but draw the sides of the waist back and exhale bring your left foot outside of your left hand and bring your right knee to the floor pull your chest forward and draw the front of your hip bones the anterior superior iliac spine the part of the front of your um, hip that is a more more bony 
you're going to draw those two parts toward one another so the abdominal region the lower belly engages and also your back engages a little bit more as you send your chest forward slow breath in and a mindful slow breath out keep breathing through the tone in the back of the throat keep connecting yourself to your breath to your life force another slow breath in and exhale slowly, root your hands down, downward facing dog, or hands on the wall if putting weight on your hands is not the thing for you today. Slow breath in as your hands root down, as your hips reach up. Slow breath out as you root your heels towards the earth. Inhale, lift your right leg up. And exhale, bring your right foot forward in between your hands. Ground through the feet. If your hands are on the wall, you're going to step your left leg back. Ground through the feet and with an inhalation, reach your arms up and bend deep into your right knee. Make the back leg, your left leg strong. Lift it up a little bit more and draw the front of your hip bones again, the ASISS, towards each other. So they're strengthening the lower abdominal region and the, and the hips as well. Draw the sides of the ribs through the sides, toward the front, so there's engagement in your core, and now spinal extension. Now reach your spine up, and maybe if it feels good, you can lean back a little bit, but it comes with an engagement here with a cat action as you go towards cow. Woo, deep breath in. Exhale, touch the ground, plant your hands and step back to downward facing dog, or again, hands on the wall if needed. Inhale the left leg up. Exhale, step your left foot forward in between your hands, ground through the feet and reach your arms up high, deep breath in. So as we extend the spine, such a good reminder for life too, as we extend our capacity to connect, we're not disconnecting from ourselves. We're not losing the flexion in the spine, at least in action as we go towards extension. We want to be able to do both at the same time. We're going to do the same thing when we're doing forward bends, when we do spinal flexion. So front of the hip bones, ASISs, toward each other, bend deep into your left knee, sides of the ribs come towards the center of your belly and reach long and tall through the upper body as your feet root into the earth. Deep breath in, exhale, touch the ground and step back, downward facing dog, hands rooted, breath full and deep. Inhale to plank pose, hands root deeply into the earth and exhale, bring your hips down, point your feet, your chest forward and up. You can bend a little bit in your elbows, broaden through your collarbones and here too. So this is a back bend. This is spinal extension. A lot of times it's practice kind of cranking the shoulders back and opening the chest and leaning the head back. So you can back up a little bit from that deep expression if that's not for you. I've learned to do that in, in my older years slowly. So the front of the hip bones draw towards each other. The sides of the ribs draw towards the center. And I'm focusing on the action of strengthening my front, not just stretching it, of then, of then therefore bringing a little bit more buoyancy to the back as I'm bending it, as I'm extending it. Downward facing dog with your exhalation, reach up and back as you ground your hands and breathe deep, slow, full. And what do you want to connect more deeply to in your life? Inhale the right leg up. Exhale, step the foot forward in between your hands. And how do you do that in a way that is supportive and well-rounded? Bring your left knee to the ground. Ground both of your feet. You're gonna keep the toes in your back leg tucked under just for more strength and reach your arms up high. Inhale, Anjaneyasana. Press down into the right foot and root down into the left. And that's gonna take you out of the depth of the bending of your knee. That's totally fine. Draw again the front of your hip bones, the ASISs towards each other, the sides of the ribs towards the center. So your belly is strong as you lift your chest up. As you take, let's do this, take the front 
um, of your throat, right? The hyoid bone, the bone that connects your, to your tongue. Take that part back. Some people call it Adam's apple, right? So take that part back as you lift your chest up, broaden through your collarbones, you're gonna bend backwards, right? You're gonna do spinal extension. So extend it, lengthen your spine. What are you lengthening yourself toward to connect more deeply to? And then bend deep into the front knee without collapsing, right? Without losing the strength, the integrity. Connect with integrity, deep breath in. And then exhale slowly, touch the ground and step back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha, Svanasana. Ground your feet, ground your hands, slow breath in, slow breath out. Inhale the left leg up, exhale, step your foot forward in between your hands and bring your right knee to the earth. Again, strong legs supporting you. Root down into your left foot, root down into the right one, and rise up, reach your arms up to the sky, and draw the left heel and the right knee towards each other, so you're creating a sense of, of centeredness, of sacred connection inside of you, so that when you bring yourself out, it can be, again, with integrity, right? Front of the hip bones draw towards each other. Sides of the ribs draw towards each other, and it helps us connect to the back, to what's behind us, to both what has our back to what has us, um, to what supports us so that we can lean back on, but also what was before us. And we don't want to forget it. We don't want to, we want to let go of certain things, but we want to weave the lessons in so that we can create a forward thinking, a forward vision that is integrated and connected. We connect forward and up and down and back. So keep the strength as you lift up through your chest. Again, the hyoid bone goes back, so the neck is more supported if you want. You can put your hands behind your head, and you, can, you don't have to go so deep. So you can lean back a little bit if that feels good and integrated and supportive for you, or you can just do it about reaching up and not going so far back, okay? One more breath in, and exhale. Touch the earth and step back to downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Hands are rooted. Hips are up. Heels reach down. Slow breath. Inhale to plank. Root the hands down and exhale. Bring your hips down and your chest forward and up. Point your feet. Spread your toes. Broaden through your chest. And again, strength in your front, so ASISs draw towards each other, sides of the ribs draw towards the center, buoyancy in the back, and then lift up through your chest. Then you can, as you broaden your collarbones, take your chest a little more forward and a little more up, and maybe the higher bone goes back, and you can go back a little bit. Deep breath in, and slowly, with an exhalation, stretch back into downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Hands are rooted. Full breath in. Slow breath out. Bring your knees down to the floor and come into child's pose. Big toes touch, knees wide apart. You can move your upper body a little bit side to side, your torso a little bit side to side. Snuggle in the space between your legs and. Gently bring your forehead to the earth and take a few breaths. I'm going to keep my head lifted so that the mic that I'm wearing doesn't sound all muffly and weird. When I put my head down, it sounds strange. So my head is lifted, but put your head down on the ground and breathe slowly. Deep and mindful breath. What are you seeking connection with inside of you, in your life, in the world? What is seeking your connection and how do you want to weave that into your life?
and slowly come up and lie on your back for a moment. We can take those spinal extensions way deeper, right? We can do way deeper back bends, but this hopefully you can bring your right knee into your chest and stretch your left leg straight. What we just did hopefully gives you some things to think about when you do spinal extensions, when you do back bends in other practices. Didn't go very deep today into form, but hopefully deep into understanding and knowledge. You know, lace your fingers behind your thigh, stretch your right leg straight up. And you can take that with you. So do that, uh, do this practice as many times as you'd like to support your system. And then take that information with you, if this is helpful for you, into other practices. And even now, so right now, how can you do in your spine, both cat and cow, right? Both the arching and the rounding. Where does it need a little bit more round and where does it need a little bit more arch? Deep breath in. Exhale, bend the right knee, place your right foot on the floor. And then inhale your left knee in and stretch your right leg straight, flex your foot. So often the lower part of the spine, the lumbar spine, we want to bring a little bit more of a, maintain the curve of it. Not too much, right? Just enough, because we want strength in the abdominal region, but we also want to make sure the natural curve of the spine is staying with us. And especially when we do back bends, you can interlace your fingers behind your left thigh, stretch your left leg up. The thoracic part of the spine, the middle of the spine, is actually, it's what we would call rounding, right? It, it's it's um, convex, it moves more out. So how do we keep that even in back bends? How do we keep the integrity then of the abdominal region as we open ourselves up? And it can move in different directions. A healthy spine can round and curve. So let's keep it healthy, right? and help maintain the natural curves. The cervical spine also is um, concave, right? It has more of an, an arch, so you can press the back of the head a little bit into the floor here and keep your neck, instead of rounding and your chin towards your chest, a little bit more curvy, a little bit more open in the back. And then bend the left knee, place your left foot on the ground and bring both of your knees into your chest, deep breath in, and our spine can also twist, right? So open the arms out to the sides and take your knees to the right as your chest turns to the left. Breathe slowly. Mindful breath in and out. And the middle part of the spine and the upper part of the spine, they, they love twisting, but the lumbar spine, which can curve back and forth nicely, doesn't like to twist so much. So keep more of engagement in the lower part of the belly and you don't have to twist so much in your lower back. Let it be a little softer there, but twist in the, more in the middle and the upper back. Slow breath. So our spine helps us stabilize and mobilize freedom and stability woven together. Bring your knees back to center with a deep inhalation. And exhale to the other side, knees to the left as your chest opens to the right, ground the right shoulder to the earth. Breathe slowly. Let the breath be mindful and with ease. But still maintain a connection to it, still with the ujjayi breath, right? And with twists, we learn to look at things from different angles 
to weave ourselves through the center and turn to this side and then another, that it's not just one way. And our spine reminds us of this well-roundedness of being. We think of it as going in the back, but it goes all the way into our center. We think of it as up and down, but it's also back and front and side to side. Knees to center, inhale. And give yourself a hug. You're gonna round your spine a little bit. Hug yourself. And then allow the spine to be supported by the earth as you release yourself into a few moments in Shavasana. You can take as much time as you'd like resting in this space, allowing it to support you. Allow yourself to be received and supported. And I will see you soon if you enjoy this video, if it's helpful for you, come back to it, put a like on it, share it with your people, and subscribe to this channel so that you get more somatic magic coming your way. And also subscribe to our mailing list for more inspiration, news-filled messages of creativity in the intersection of body and nature, and how to live a life that is always in relationship with more than ourselves. It's on mamamandala.com and there's going to be a little link for you in the description of the video. So I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Namaste.